The following show contains adult content. It's not our intent to offend anyone, but we want to inform you that if you are a child under the age of 18 or get offended easily, this next show may not be for you. The content, opinions, and subject matter of these shows are solely the choice of your show hosts and their guests, and not those of the Entertainment Network or any affiliated stations. Any comments or inquiries should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for listening. Hey ho, what's up everybody? Welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, bringing you the good times in music, fashion, pop culture, and entertainment. We got a fun show for you guys today. Before we get started, let me introduce my cool, outrageous man about town co-host, Mr. Ron Russell. Like they don't know who I am. And Astro. Astro, say hi, Astro. Yay! What's up, everybody? Chat room is starting to fill up. Hey, B. Claudia. Hey, Cindy Lady Lake. Hey, Hub Reynolds. Hey, Hub Reynolds Jr. Hey, Stefan. Uh, we have a lot of fun today. They said they like your hair. <laughs> he said, ooh, ooh, Ron's hair. Anyway. It was styled for playing General Milan, and now it doesn't go any other way but how it was cut. So you can grow it out, and then you can cut it however you want, because now you're yeah, done I'm gonna, with that. Yeah, I'm going to cut it and chop it up and make it all wild and crazy. I don't like it combed like this. I look like I did when I went to elementary school when I was eight years old. Yeah, we used to have a green gel. Remember that shit? It came in a jar, <laughs> and it was mind. green. And you put it on your hair. You put your hair in place, and when it dried, your head was like a rock. You could go like this, and, you, and if you crumpled it with your fingers – all dust came down. That's what we did to our hair. We didn't do then. that. We didn't do that. We had moose and stuff that would do that. But No, we, I forgot what it was like. A pomade, they used to call it. A pomade. I forgot what it was called. Jubilee, maybe. Maybe j green jubilee? I don't, I don't know. Dippity-doo. How Reynolds Jr. dippity-doo. What? Dippity-doo. Well, I used to get in trouble a lot because the teachers would tell me to comb my hair. And I would say, it is comb. And they would say, no, it's not. It's all over the place. I said, well, then you try comb me and get it into, I have a lot of hair. And my hair has a mind of its own. No, but Hub said the stuff was called dippity-doo. Dippity-doo. Called... Dippity That's what he was saying. That's what he said, yeah. Dippity-doo. Well, you knew that? How did you know that? You're too young. <laughs> he knew that, though. Dippity-doo. Yes, dippity-doo. Fuck you. So, you yeah. guys, we have a fun show for you today. We have Julian Schlossberg coming on to talk about his new book, which Ron has it over there. Pull it over here so we can reach his it. His book is... is We're going to be talking it's, about... It's his second edition, and I'm so ashamed to say that I haven't read it yet. But I'll explain to Julian why. And uh, I have read a whole bunch of it, so I'm excited about the whole thing. And then we have Mark Loverush coming on, you guys. He's a, Mark Loverush. Oh, I thought you said he's, Mark Wolver. No, no, Mark yeah, Loverush. But... He's the DJ, um, producer, DJ that we had on a couple of months ago, maybe two months ago or something. And we had a really good time with him, so he's coming back on. I asked him to come on because it was so much fun. Yeah, repeat. Um, this is Julian's third time, right? Yeah, this is Julian's third time. Right, Astro. And um, so we want to thank everybody for tuning in every week. Our last week's show has been very well received, so thank you. We had a good time last week. I think we're going to have a good time today. Um, you can listen to the show on Red Circle, Apple Podcasts. Please listen on Red Circle. That's the best for us. Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Radio Public, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Prime. Yay! He's the most romantic dog I have ever had. All he wants to do is tongue us. That's nice. Well, um, it's his tongue. I don't mind. I love him. Um, I love him so much. He's the best. He doesn't do anything wrong. He's perfect. Right, Astro? Um, Even sometimes when you pee on the floor, or that's poop. not bad. That's because we didn't let you out. It's not your fault. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> this dog can do no wrong, but he is the sweetest dog ever. He no really man. is. He's the fab. He's, the, he's really fabulous. He's the love of my life. He's fabulous. He's so cute. He's I fabulous. Love you, I love you. I love you. I love you. And so, he, watch he, this. Watch this, Cringer. Watch. <laughs> He has to come in and be three way. We That's call why him three way. We nicknamed him three way because he hates when Jimmy and I kiss. He gets so jealous because he wants to be the one kissed. Right, Astrowitz? Yes, I'm going to make you Jewish. You got to like, love it. We also want to say hi to B. Claudia uh, in the chat room. I just want to thank her. She did a favor for me and made a graphic for some a, a future project that we're not talking about yet. But she's so talented and fantastic. So thank you so much for all your help. And thank everybody who promoted the show. It looks like Julian's here, so we might as well bring him on. Yeah, he's got another funny. show in an hour, so we can only be have him until oh, Julian. What happened? He has another show, so he has to leave at yeah, three fifty-five. Uh, uh, no, he's got his show. He does oh, his, his show, show on Wednesday, so oh, so oh, that's why we're doing yes, it. He does his radio show on Wednesday. TV show, radio show. So we're going to bring him on TV now. Um, he, well, he does video like we do. Yeah. All right. So let's bring him on, Julian. Come. Hey. Hi. Oh, you're back. You're back. And the general, the general, I have to salute the general of the clown motel. He's got a bit louder. Uh, hey, can we make him louder anyway? Let's uh, make him louder. Is your volume up all the way, Julian? I, I it's up all the way. Oh, that I one can be can there. Yeah, talk is louder. That better? Yeah, that's better. Can I? Okay. Um, why Anyhow, you, look at the general. Look at Jimmy. This is incredible. What is? He said, look at the general. Look at Jimmy. This is incredible. He's back on the show. Come on. Get with it. <laughs> I, know, I, like, I like the fact that Jimmy is my subtitles. Yes. This is important. Ryan, can you not hear me? I can hear you now. Oh, okay. uh, I'm still sleeping. I had one of those 84-year-old uh, nights. You know, where you sleep one night, next night you don't, and you sleep one night, and next night you don't. I'm going through that syndrome. It's called the old bag syndrome. Oh, well, I'm so glad that you're here uh, and not sleeping right now. Oh, no, but I could. <laughs> Another guest, I would, but not for you. <laughs> well, actually, I, I was going to say that. How, how are you and what's going on? And I'm sorry to say I have not read your second book yet. I have a hunch a lot of people can say that. Well, that because they didn't know about it yet. They're going to know about it now, and they're all going to no. no, they're going to I read know. a whole bunch of it. I didn't read the whole thing because I picked out the what stuff I liked. What happened was when we were flying, I fell asleep on the plane. And I, that's my reading time. And then, of course, I guess as you know from Facebook, I was shooting in Nevada for days, which was exhausting uh, yeah. at my age in the heat. All those hours. You hand me the book, though. I and need to have uh, book. Oh, wait, I'll do it. No, I'm gonna. So hold on. Let's, we have to first. We have we're to introduce him. No, no. We're gonna introduce him. Please don't do it's that. It's a nice book to hit somebody. Okay, with. but uh, yeah. all right, you guys. Now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, the incredibly talented Julian Schlossberg. Hello and welcome to the show. We have a chat room that's starting to fill up, so please say hello to everybody in the chat room. Well, hello, everybody in the chat room. I'm nothing but uh, a little pal parrot here. You guys are like Edgar Bergen, and I've turned into Charlie McCarthy. That's good. It makes <laughs> for a good show. So you know, guys, the print in this book is very legible, and I could probably do this book in a couple of hours, and I will. But you know what, Julian, to be honest, I have three books ahead of you. Because three? Three? Three books ahead Wait, of let you. me have it. I, I need it. What the fuck do you want it uh, for? I need it because you didn't even tell the title of it or anything. We're going to talk about the book. I will tell the <laughs> All right, you guys. So Julian is here. First of all, let's give some credits. You guys, he's got two Oscar nominations, two primetime Emmy nominations. He's won six Tony Awards, two Obie Awards, seven Drama Desk Awards, five Outer Critics Circle Awards, and... He had his first book that that's how we met him and he came on the show. It was called Try Not to Hold It Against Me, A Producer's Life. It's um, a good book. It's a great book. We both read it. And um, recently, I think. Very nostalgic this, if you're from that time of, of life. And the second book, I think, just came out. When did it ta tell us when did the second book come out? Uh, just two weeks ago, uh, Jimmy. Um, we had a launch at uh, Sardi's in New York. And uh, hey. Elaine May, uh, the wonderful, talented Elaine May, interviewed me. 
Uh, and uh, it was great. We had a lot of laughs. Renee Taylor was there. You guys Yay. know Renee. And, yes. um, yeah, so it was fun. And I'm happy to have it out. Uh, and I'm done. 600 pages, two books. That's enough. Enough. I know, you'll, I'm yeah, sure but you'll your show is becoming a big hit. You have some okay. great celebrities on your show. Yeah, we we've been able to get a lot of really good people, and uh, how, do you, how do you get them? Bribery or gunpoint? A lot of groveling. A lot of groveling. <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys, we'll go back to that. Well, let's just talk about that real quick since we're out of order a little bit. Jillian's got a show on Wednesdays called Movie Talk, right? Yeah, you take her on Wednesdays. Yes. Or- we have uh, Matthew Broderick this week, and we had Alan Alder, and we've had. Oh, Sandy Duncan and Hal Linden and Martin Sheen and awful lot of wonderful and folks. And what about my favorite, Isabella Rossellini? And Isabella Rossellini, yes, that's my right. God, yeah, how I, I, how I love her. I wrote down some others. Dick Cavett, you guys, Elizabeth Berkeley, Alan Al, Steve Gutenberg, David Hyde Pierce, Martin Sheen, Eddie Izzard, uh, Ben Mankiewicz, Marlo Thomas, and F. Murray Abraham, who's in one of my favorite movies ever. And you um, got you got what's his name? He's different. The one that was supposed to play God. This one is supposed to play God. The, the Irish guy. What's the, the, with all the sons? With the son that's a junkie. Uh, what the hell is it? He just said his name. I'm gone today. I'm not going to be working. Um, the the guy that was supposed to play God in uh, the movie you have. You tried. Oh, Martin Sheen. Martin Sheen. He's hard to get. Martin <laughs> Sheen is not very. Uh, Interviewable. Is that a wonderful word, interviewable? I, I know the word, but he was really, I hope you'll listen to it, uh, Ron, because he really was very forthcoming. We did, he was quite, he, he was taken with the book. Uh, he was sent the book. Everyone our age is taken by that book because it's so reminiscent of all of us. I related to so much of it myself. I mean, I just kept saying, holy shit. It's like I'm hanging out with Julian. He's my buddy growing up. So, you guys, the second book came out two weeks ago. You want to read the title? Uh, my first book, part two. Uninteresting a title. Producer's you Life could have, Continues. You could have done a better title. No, no, that. A Producer's Life Continues, because that's part oh, of the that first I, one. I like that. By Julian Schlossberg. That I like. I, I love the way you, you know wrote what? another foreword by Elaine May. I thought that you, was You know what? Priceless. My first book, part two, I don't care for. I love A Producer's Life Continues. I would have just made the title A Producer's Life Continues because that's important. The fact that it's a second book, who gives a shit? But the, <laughs> fact that, the fact that your life still continues, Julian, that appeals to me because I want to know what's tomorrow for you. What is tomorrow for you? What's going well, on? I think it's Thursday. No, stop no, it's it. Wednesday. Okay, oh, tomorrow well, is Thursday. You're right. I want to apologize again for that luncheon that we were late for. I had no idea it was a luncheon on the clock. I thought it was a schmooze luncheon. You know, we could hang out for a couple of hours and bullshit. But you had another appointment. And we were lost. And we were <laughs> me, me, Mr. New York, that I grew up in. I knew every street lamp in New York City got lost. Could you believe it? It was, I was I was surprised, but I was so glad you came. And the no, and we had like, we had we a lot have, of fun. We, yeah, we, but we didn't have enough time because we love you and we wanted more of you. Um, well, so I, I didn't know it was not an on the clock luncheon, or I would have really left way earlier than we did. But I went. I mean, to we wrong, left two hours early. We got stuck in traffic, <laughs> and, I, I, and I went to the wrong address. It's funny. So there I am walking the streets. And I don't know where I am. I'm having a delusional fit. And I see Jimmy walking on the other side of the street looking for me. Thank God he found me. Or I never I would, was have like, got, I would never have got there. I was like, we're 10 blocks in the wrong way. Because <laughs> I had no idea. I had no idea what the restaurant was. I know that restaurant well. And he doesn't carry his phone. <laughs> but I forgot, I forgot the title, the name of that restaurant. And if he wouldn't have seen me on the street, we would have been lost forever because he doesn't. So I anyway, had his phone. <laughs> it, it, was, it was meant to be, and it turned out good. Now, Eileen Shapiro was also at your book signing. Yes, she was. And she was disappointed that Elaine May wouldn't give her an interview. Why Elaine, May Elaine, doesn't give, Elaine May doesn't yeah. give anybody. Why, why is that? She's in the business. You're compelled to do that. You're she, supposed she, to give interviews. It's Elaine, part of the business. 
uh, Elaine has become, um, in my estimation, the Greta Garbo of our time. She right. does not give interviews. She doesn't. She's not comfortable. She finds it uh, um, difficult, and she just doesn't want to do it. So she's maintained for the fifty years that we've been friends. She just doesn't do it. I I just got her to interview me uh, because it was different. Uh, and as it turned out, when she did the first interview with me, she came out. It was a really crowded room because it was at the uh, 92nd Street Y. And she came out, and people were standing. They were really, it was very, they all wanted to see her because of what you just said, Rod, that she doesn't do it. And she said, look, I told Julian that I don't like this. I don't do this well. And then she said, so don't expect to have a good time. Wow. <laughs> so I saw that Mike, because uh, Mark, uh, we're, we've had Mark Papadatos. I don't know how you pronounce his name, but he's, he's like interviewed more people than anybody on the planet, you know. And uh, he said it was a great event. Eileen said it was a great event and um, a lot of fun. And I, hopefully it was a good push off for the beginning of the book. So I asked Eileen on your Renee Taylor interview, how did that go? And Eileen said, sadly. And I said, why is that? She said, because she kept talking about Joe. Joe's her husband who has passed away. And I know how she loves him beyond belief. And I'm so sorry that Renee is still suffering from his loss. Uh, I know that I've spoken to her many times on the phone, and Joe has always come up. It's like she still lives with him. She told me that he's next to her all the time. And I just feel so bad for Renee because, you know, you have to let go at some point and not torture yourself. And she's a widow who really loved her man. And I knew Joe. And Joe was a sweetheart and a doll. So I can understand why she misses him so much. He was a talkative, friendly, kind, loving man. So, Renee, my love, please, honey. Move he, on. He, he was he, on. he was he was great to work with, and he was great to have dinner with. And uh, I'm very very happy that I got to know them for so many years. Uh, it's been a long time. I did my very first Broadway play with them. Uh, it was called "It Had to Be You," and right. we had it had to be you, right? Yeah, I like love it. <clears throat> yeah, no, they're, they're they're easy to Renee is easy to love and to be a friend with. Uh, yes. we, you know, she invited me to Florida to stay at her place for three days. That's the Jewish way, three days. After three days, you smell like fish. I love that. <laughs> you know, remember that? All the uncles, oh, to, the uncles used to say, my uncle used to say that to my aunt all the time. What? Your sister's coming? Remember, three days of fish. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember that very well. I Also, I was close with a, a very famous producer named Joseph E. Levine, who produced The Lion in Winter and The Graduate and many movies. And I was very excited because many, many years ago, they did a whole full page on me in the New York Post, a story about at home with, and it was really great. And I called Joe and I said, oh, Joe, blah, blah, blah. And he said, kid, remember, they're wrapping fish in it tomorrow. <laughs> Only we would understand that. But anyway, getting back to Renee, she's really very, very smart. And like she told, because I said to her, Renee, in the movie, it's a lot of crawling and, you know, physical stuff. Are you, will you be able to do it? She said, Ron, I'm 92, but I've got more energy than a 20 year old. And you bet I can do it. I said, <laughs> okay, that's great. So I love her. I love her energy. I love the fact that she doesn't feel old, think old, or look old. Yeah, so I'm true. happy. I'm happy with Renee. Very happy. Me, so let's go. Um, I'm going to go. So so the first book, tell everybody a, like a, a, a quick summary of the first oh, book. Wait, how, I wanted to make a point. Oh. You know, Jimmy was funded. My movie was in a package of four. Jimmy was funded for three that he's going into production for. My movie was not. When I questioned it, I was told, your movie is about a Jewish woman who's a hero. Right now, that's not what the public wants because of the anti-Semitism. And I was blown back. I thought, oh my God, what am I listening to? 1940? Uh, Nazi Germany? What the fuck is going on? What do you mean? 
They said, well, it could cause riots in the movie theater because people will, pro uh, what do you call it? Uh, protest. Protest it. I said, protest what? It's a comedy horror movie, and she's a lovely character who's a beautiful Jewish woman who saves America. She's a hero. They said, yes, but right now, that's not what people want. I said, well, what do they want? Me to have the Nazis come in and, and make tattoos out of her? I, what do you want? You want to put her in a gas chamber? Will that make the movie work? I mean, I was furious. So anyway, you know, the movie did not get funded because yet. Yes. yet. But Jimmy's got somebody else now that's possibly going to do it if they get approval. It is amazing what is going on in our country against Jews. Why? What the hell is this all about? Where are we? Are we going back in history? Are we getting crazy or what? And I'm going to do this now. Being Jewish and Jewish people are the nicest people you will ever meet in your life. You go to their home, they feed you, they love you, they make jokes with you, they call you mishpuka, no matter what you are, black, white, yellow, green, red, blue. Jewish people are fabulous. And stop this anti-Semitism and stop this hatred for Jewish people. Stop it and support Israel. Israel was attacked. They did not attack anybody. They were attacked. And all Israel is doing is defending themselves, which is what any country would do. I've said it. Good. I think if you're elected, I'm voting for you. I wish I, <laughs> you know what, Julian, I wish more people... I'm, I'm, you know what? My father always said Hitler got away with murder because Nazi Germany, the Jews were so afraid to come forward, they hid. They should have gathered in mass and fought the Nazis. So they're doing it again in this country. All the Jews are hiding. They don't want to come forward and defend Israel or their religion. And I think that's terrible. Every Jew I know should come forward and say, stop this. This anti-Semitism has not, it's not allowed in America. We do not do this here. We do not, if we did this with black people, if we said the things about black people that we say about Jews, I would be called a racist, be put in jail, and, and Harris would be the first one to shoot me. <laughs> what, what happened to my book? I know, we're going no, back no, to your book Let me tell you now. something, Julian. Because actually you have uh, a lot of great Ju Jewish wait, people in your book. Ju Julian, we have a very diversified audience. Our audience gets bored if we go on one subject for a whole time. So we are a conversation show, as you know. And I get an opportunity to, to say what I want to say because I can. And I do. And because of my movie, I, it led, segued into this big speech. But I just feel like I have to do something about it. I can't sit back and be persecuted. And my work is, is called, I don't know what. How would you like it if they said, don't buy Julian's book, it's full of Jews? <laughs> it's, full, and you're, it's full of Jews. All I, all I can tell you, going back to the beginning of the show, you forgot about Brill Cream. Who? You forgot about Brill Cream. Oh, Brill For your hair. <laughs> See what I mean? See what I mean? All you have to do is tell people who love you and your work, tell people to stop this anti-Semitism. Let me agree with you, so let's That's go. All. All. all right, you guys, so here's what I want you to do, because I want to do a little segue. Tell everybody a little teeny synopsis about the first book and how you, how this, how you decided to come and do the second book. And then I'm going to talk about some of the people featured in it, because you got some really big people in this second book. Well... The first book came about because of the uh, pandemic. I was unable to do what I like to do, which is to create or be part of a production. And as you guys know, whether it's a film or television or theater, there's a group of people get together, try to do the best we can to produce something and yes. to have nothing. I, I just was, so I felt, well, all my life, people have said to me, oh, you ought to write a book, which, of course, is a sentence I'm sure we've all heard a million yeah. times. I heard and it constantly. I, that's right. And so I gave the answer that I know you give. Maybe one day I'll do it. You know, <laughs> and that's that. Well, there was the, that was the day I decided, okay, let me see if there's enough here for a book. And I started, the, you know, the brain is a computer, as we've been taught. And you start thinking of what happened with this one and that one, and it leads 
to something else. I mean, I know that Ron will talk about Jane Russell, then he'll get involved with Bette Davis. I mean, these things happen. Our brain works that way. And so I started writing about this kid, me, who grew up in the Bronx, who loved show business, who had no connections to it, but grew up on radio, listening to radio, which was so wonderful because you didn't have it spoon-fed to you. You had to imagine you're on the range with the Lone Ranger. You're walking down these stairs to Jack Benny's vault. I mean, it was great. And then oh, early in his sanctum, when that door squeaked. Oh, uh, that door. That, oh, my God. Yeah. Welcome to the inner sanctum. Oh, my God. I used to like, get under the covers. <laughs> and lights out. Remember? Lights out. I remember lights out. <laughs> so I, I also was lucky enough to be living in New York at that time when early television was emanating from New York City. And I would go down and become an audience member as a kid. I, oh, wow. you, you weren't afraid of a nine or a 10 year old to go downtown and to see Perry Como's dress rehearsal guys. They gave tickets to Perry Como's dress rehearsal. I ran to see it. And after it was over, I ran back to my home in order to see what were the changes from the right. dress rehearsal to the actual show. It's not exactly your everyday childhood, but that was what I was really interested in. I knew from the very beginning I had to be in show business. What I was going to do, I don't know, but I was so enamored of it to the point that I would bring Variety home and my mother banned Variety. I <laughs> She said, I want you to be a doctor, a lawyer, a dentist, not in show business. So, of course, I bought Variety outside the house, not inside the house. So, so Variety's the, been around a long time. Oh, yeah, since the 20s. Oh, yes. Oh, my God, yes. Yeah. And, and so, my mother used to buy Variety when she was an actress back in 1918, 1920. Yeah, it was, it's been around a long time. and. Long time. Uh, and I couldn't believe that there was a whole paper devoted to show business. And so that was very important to me. And so I kind of tell the story in the first book about that. And, Ron, the reason I called it my first book, part two, was that it really is a, an extension of the first book. In other words, I, there were more stories that I hadn't told. And how that happened, going on your show and other shows you would ask me questions, and I realized, oh, my God, I didn't write about B. Arthur, or I didn't write about Raquel Welsh, or I didn't write about George C. Scott. And so I went back and started writing again. But that's why I said earlier, that's enough. Five, six hundred pages, two books. I'm done with that. Uh, the same thing will happen this time, though. You're going to be going on all these shows and talking about it, and you're going to remember a whole bunch of other people you forgot, it, and then book three will come about. I, I don't remember half the people I've met in my lifetime. Of course, it's impossible. He only remembers so, them when he sees them on TV. They or, come if, up. or if I'm talking to Jimmy about a specific restaurant or whatever, then they come back into my mind. But then I forget them two minutes later. So if I really had to write a book, I would have to have a tape recorder and quickly, you know, talk into the tape recorder as my brain. Because at 84, you don't remember too much anymore. You, you well, forget. Generally, because we're contemporaries, generally you remember the past more than current. You, yeah, you, can, I, I, you, you know what? <laughs> when I went on set, I... Uh, said to Jimmy, if it wasn't for the earplug, I would never be able to have lines. Jimmy yes. fed me some of my lines that I would forget. And it's terrible because I would read the line and then they're ready to shoot and the line is gone completely out of my head. Yes. Well, so, we, both know that, we both know this is not unusual when you get older, number one. Uh, Brando used to have cue cards. They would hold up during The Godfather, okay. Jimmy Kahn, oh, Bobby Duval. They'd hold it up. I mean, Orson Welles had same thing. I mean, a lot of the fine actors that we knew had that problem. And many of them are using, as you just said, the earplug. Robert, it's, it's, De, Niro, Robert De Niro uses earplugs. Meryl Streep Johnny uses Depp. earplugs. Johnny Depp earplugs. A lot of people uh, use cue cards, too. The list, we've been on set with them and seen yeah, them. <laughs> the list goes on and on and on and on. And I'm wondering... Um, 
Why is it I can remember trivia, but I can't remember anything important? That's what baffles me. Why is it trivia? I, I, I could remember the most minute, stupid, and insignificant something, but not something important. It is that is interesting. I don't know what the answer is, but I do know that we do, we ha, we know so little about our bodies and our brain. They're still turning things out. I I I remember I was doing a play that I produced with Woody Allen, and his father died at a hundred, and his mother at ninety eight. And I said, "Oh well, Woody, you're looking good. This is going to be great." It's only twenty percent. Look it up. Twenty percent. That's all it is. The genes. I thought what. And he was right. I looked it up, and I always thought that longevity was really big in hereditary, but it's apparently not. So who knows? Because I'm adopted, and I don't have any idea. <laughs> I, I, I don't know about that because I have a friend, my friend Perry Winkler, who's 103. She just turned it last month, a couple of weeks ago. And Perry has a very... Uh, I think her mother lived to be like a thousand or something. I mean, there was long, <laughs> long longevity in her family. Now, yes. her daughter, her husband, uh, who, who you might have known, Jack Borgenit. Did you ever meet Jack Borgenit? No. no. He was a very big shot in New York, multimillionaire. He was the first person to make dresses for children that yeah. weren't adult clothing. It was children's clothing. And um, he lived to be 102. So Perry's 103, Jack is 102, and their daughter, Nicole, is up in her 60s and looks 40. So I think Nicole is going to have a, a long life. So I well, think I'd, bet, I, I'd bet on Nicole, too. I think there's something to I like, it. I love it. I think that. So, so in the new book, so the first book, you guys, first of all, has great stuff. Everybody should go buy the first book. Uh, read it and then go buy the second book so you can find he writes, out. He writes he, well. He writes folks. extremely well. He doesn't write flowery and he doesn't write uh, cute or or like you figure it out. He just blurts it out. It's like a yenta. That's what I like. So he just a, tells the story. For those of you that don't know what a yenta is, a yenta is a gossip. A person like me who tells stories about other people. And we're yentas. And so, that's why I love the book so much. Both books. Because they're, they're fun to read. I hate a book that I have to stop and think about the page I just read because I didn't get it. I hate that kind of writing. When that's, that's what is it called? Uh, when they try to be super smart and they're not. <laughs> you know, those, those stupid people. What is it called? Super, the word? super, super silious. <laughs> yes. That's good. But, you know, they try to impress you with big words and like five big words in a sentence. And you say, what the fuck? You know, <laughs> so, no, your, book is, your, your books are fun read. So and, you guys, wait, just, and for those of you who are East Coasters and in our age realm, will remember so much of what Julian has written that he brings you back to when you were time. a child. And that's what I enjoyed so much about the book. Because today I live in today's world, which doesn't accept me because I'm old. And they make fun of me and they kid around about my age and things I say. Also, the way I speak, some words I use, they say nobody uses that word anymore. That Betty Davis did in Now Voyager, you know, that kind of thing. So your book just brought me back to a lovely time. It, it, it was, I loved it. So I, I, I can't wait to read the second one. So you guys, in the second book, here's some of the people. And I know all the people that, it, that it's featuring some of the following, except for one of them. Um, and, and I'm going to let you tell me who she is once we go through it all. But here's the list, you guys, featured in this new book. Uh, Woody Allen, Raquel Welch, Peter Falk, Elaine May, Warren Beatty, Mel Brooks, B. Arthur, John Cassavetes, Dory Previn, Zero Mostel, Mostel, Mostel. Dorsey Scott, Barbara Streisand, Eli Wallach, Renee Taylor, Elia Kazan, Quincy Jones, Betty Buckley, Mike Nichols, Marlo Thomas, and Charlton Heston. And I don't know who Dory Previn is. She's the only one I didn't know who she was. Oh, She's Dory Previn's daughter. That's Previn's daughter. Well, no, Dory Previn was married to Andre Previn. Andre and she, Previn, right. Yeah, and she was a great songwriter. She wrote uh, Come Saturday Morning. There's a okay. whole group of great songs that she wrote. The Valley of the Dolls, you know, gotta get, gotta go, gotta da da. She was a fine, fine writer. And I was going to do, because she had an incredible life, 
Dory uh, was married to Andre. He, Andre was doing a movie with Mia Farrow. Uh, he invited Mia Farrow to be their house guest. And in a, in a couple of what, weeks or months, Mia left uh, with Andre and Dory was left behind. So, uh, <laughs> such a, how it goes in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and, and uh, Dory wrote a song called Beware of Young Girls. <laughs> I wonder so what I, that was saying. <laughs> yeah. And so what I what I wanted to do at that time was to do a story of her life because the music that she wrote is sensational. You could look it up. And I got Bernadette Peters to uh, play Dory, who sings like a like a beautiful light nightingale, as you know. And I love her. I, I met Bernadette Peters in a fabric store in the village downtown. When she was nobody yet, she was just starting off in Dames at Sea. And right. I told her, I said, you're going to be great one day. Then years later, I was coming out of the theater after seeing Burton, Richard Burton as Bluebeard. And she was there with some guy. And I stopped her in the lobby. I said, remember me? I was the one that told you you're going to be a big star. She said, yes, I do. <laughs> I said, oh, crap, you don't really remember me. She said, yes, I do. It was the so-and-so fabric store down in town. So she really and had remembered, yeah. She did. A lot of people remember me because I'm a little, you know, forward. <laughs> 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 just a little. Just By a little the way, I, I would like to put my vote in to say that your hair looks great. I don't know why you don't like the way it looks. I because think it looks great. It's not my personality. This is this haircut was for when I played Milan for the, for the general, right? But in real life, he thinks it makes. I, I am. I no, not. I don't, no, I don't care about that. My personality is my hands are always in my hair. I'm like an Anna Magnani, you know, with the hair. It's just <laughs> it, must, it must be the Italian in me. <laughs> I don't know. I also I don't know. I I vote for that hair. It looks pretty damn good to me. But okay. you know. It's 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 funny with uh, with the second book was that when people came uh, at, at this uh, press conference that we did at Sardis, people were asking me questions about specific chapters. And I realized, oh, my gosh, of course, they had been given the book because I forgot that. <laughs> how do they know? Yeah. How, how, how do they know about and then, Oh, boy. So. Well, I you like know. the chapter. I like uh, that the chapter was Steve Gutenberg, a movie star, is born just because he was on our show. He's been on our show in the past, right? Um, and so he was like, it was very cool. Um, but the thing I liked a lot though was the chapter with brief encounters because that's kind of like what Ron. Ron has all these encounters with all these superstar people. You know, like he met Warren Beatty like in the bathroom. I think it's you true. know, peeing in Beverly Hills. We were or peeing something. next to each other, and people yeah. said, "Well, did you look?" I said, "No, of course not. I would <laughs> never look." <laughs> and I didn't look, and I did not look. And so you had encounters with Warren Beatty and Charlton Heston and stuff. So I like that that a lot, just because it kind of made me think of that. You know, if you could turn that into a whole book, Ron would have a whole book of like. Yeah, but you know why I don't want to people. write a book? Because people are going to say he's full of shit. Today, if you don't have a picture with the star, they say he's making it up. They don't understand that back then, Betty Davis. If you did, I had I posted a picture this week of Betty. And I'm lighting her cigarette, and of course I'm not in the shot, just my hand is, and Betty. If Betty knew that Rob, Bob Monroe took that picture, she would have walked out of that room and been furious. You did not take a picture of Betty, Rita Hayworth, or anybody without hair, makeup, and lighting. That's how they were trained. They didn't do this. I'm in the street, look at me. They would have a nervous breakdown. So... I don't have any picture proof of all the people I met. I don't have a cell phone to take a picture of Warren peeing next to me. You see, <laughs> I, I don't have any of that sort of authority. Actually, I, 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 I don't think you need that to tell the yes, story. You do. Yes, you what, do. What, what, Ron, whether they believe it or not, what the hell do you care? You know it's true. Uh, I don't I, have, no, I don't I have I don't, no, I don't. no, 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 no. I have a reputation for telling the truth. Being a Brooklyn guy, we were raised, if you lie, you're out. We don't like liars in Brooklyn or bullshit but artists they don't believe or show-offs or phonies. If you're any of those things in Brooklyn, we don't talk to you. We like down-to-earth, real, honest people who don't lie. Even the mafia doesn't lie. They just change the story a little bit like they do in Washington today. 
But it's nothing. It's not a sin because today everybody changes stories. It's it's. I agree with you, Julian. Like I don't think it matters. One thing I thought was really cool. Now I know that we got like the test version of the book, so I don't know if it changed in the second version. Um, oh, I can't wait to not, read this. Book. But um, I want but I test. love the fact that there's no pictures in the second book, um, and that it's just a, a book. And you know, you take it, take it or leave it. The stories are, you know, super great. Um, the book is super interesting. Yeah, but the pictures work. I lived across the street from Rita Hayworth, okay? She lived in Penthouse 4 on Spalding Drive in Beverly Hills, okay? I'm outside one day with my daughter, Deirdre, who's about seven. And who comes walking down the street with her nurse but Rita Hayworth? She was out for her walk. I stopped her. I said, hello, Rita Hayworth. And she looked at me. She said, oh, I remember you from... She had no idea. She was, you know, gone already, old timers. Yeah. But stunningly beautiful. She was yeah. in, with, with, in boots, but beautiful, still beautiful. We, we now found another thing we have in common. I lived in the same building in New York with Rita Hayworth when she was sadly <laughs> gone. She was gone, but uh, oh, she was gone when I met her too. Yeah, and she and and I. She was with Thank her daughter. She was living with her daughter then. The gossip, I, the, yeah, the gossip I heard in the street that day was they were showing Gilda at the uh, theater in Beverly Hills, the old theater. What's it called? One on Wilshire Boulevard. Anyway, there was a big life-size poster of Rita Hayworth. And as Rita left the theater, she stole the poster. She took it. <laughs> <laughs> and that, no, seriously. And she had it in her living room. Of her is Gilda. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, well, so, I, a million I, stories. I, uh, Andrea I, King. Do you know who Andrea had, King was? Andrea King was my best friend. Oh, yes, I knew that, Andrea King. I yeah. loved her and her mother, Marbell. Marbell was kept when she was young by Winston Churchill. Oh, and okay. she was in the living room one night asleep in a hardback chair like this. And she woke up and she said, Oh, Winston, I miss you so. <laughs> the old lady. Andrea King was the best. She wrote a book in the shadow of a star. I read the galley. It never went into print. But it was about Betty Davis, who was hurting her career at Warner Brothers. Uh, these are stories that I don't have proof of, validation. But they're true stories. She lived three doors down from me. I was 306 South Spalding, and she was three doors down. And I, I say write the book and the hell with anybody else. It's your story. You know it's true, and you yeah. should do it. You should do it. And if you want, well, send, I you, send, I have, send me a chapter, and I'll give you a note or two if you want. I have three movies coming up, and I'm in development right now for O Negative. O Negative, I play a gay vampire who is raising his daughter and teaching her how to be a vampire. Wonderful script, by the way. It's like Wizard of Oz. I take her to an enchanted land. I love the script. I love the part. And I want to play the part dead. I don't want to, I want to suck your blood. I don't want to be the typical vampire with the shadow cheeks. I want to be a dead person who speaks dead. Because when you're dead, you do not have any emotion whatsoever. You simply just speak. And I'm going to cultivate this character, and and I, I work. He's going to write the book eventually. That's what he's telling you. He, he's not doing it right now because we do have a lot. I, of I, doubt, I doubt it. You know why I won't write it? Because if I keep it Hollywood, it won't be many pages. And if I bring in my life, I have to bring up names of people who won't be happy. They won't be happy because of the stories that are connected with their names. But they're all dead, so it doesn't matter. They're not all dead. No, no they're not all dead. They're not <laughs> anyway, all dead. let's go back. So first of all, Julian, where do people go to get your book? And you guys, Julian's website, too, to find out more about him is julianschlossbergproducer.com. Who is a sensational person and a great friend, and I love him. So where do people go to get the book right now? If well, they want I'd, to like to, I'd like to let you guys know that not only is it in paperback and on Kindle, but I recorded it. I, I read it myself. So there's an audio copy, audio book, and it's all on Amazon. I mean, <laughs> what isn't on Amazon? Everything yes, is everything on, Amazon. on Amazon. That's very smart, though. To, so I, I actually uh, uh, 
work with an audio book company and it's very smart to do it in your own voice as opposed to I, having oh, I, I, yeah, yeah that i felt gee whiz i mean i i don't want to hand it over to somebody because they don't know what uh, what i'm trying to uh really kind of talk about your, your uh, expression. exactly thank you for my subtitle again so that's yeah. good <laughs> no I anyhow no we we just drove we drove to nevada six and a half hours and we drove home from Nevada six and a half hours. How wonderful would it have been for me to snap in your audio book and not have to listen to Jimmy, but you for six hours? Six and a half, yeah. Well, six and a half. That's what we do with audio books when we're driving. They're the best thing to have. My friend, are, Barbara, are, my friend Barbara Rosenblatt, you know Barbara Rosenblatt? You know the I name? don't, no. She's no. the queen of voiceover. And audio books. She's got recorded and won awards for more more books than she did Barbara Streisand's. She book. did Barbara Streisand's book, and I read, I listened to. I mean, Barbara has a voice. Oh my God, it's smoky, and so soothing and beautiful that you could listen to her for hours and hours. Get something by Barbara Rosenblatt, and that's what she was. Uh, Cantor Ro Rosenblatt's uh, niece. You know Cantor Rosenblatt? Yeah, I, I was, certainly do. I certainly do. Cantor Rosenblatt. Yeah. yeah. And, and she is she's a wonderful, wonderful voiceover. She's an actress as well. I like love this. I so, have you know, go ahead, go ahead, Julian. It's Rosenblatt with one T. Go ahead, Julian. I just wanted to tell you there was at one point at Sardi's, uh, Elaine said to me, Do you do you don't generally write anything personal in the book? in either book. I said, well, I do. And I said, I, I do write in this particular book. I wrote about the, um, the, the idea of the midlife crisis that men go through often. And I was going, I was in my forties or maybe even early fifties and going out with young women. And I took one woman uh, up to the um, apartment building. And I said, I got out and I said, do you know that this is a pre-war building? And she said, Vietnam. <laughs> How young was this chick? <laughs> she was probably, probably was in her twenty twenties, and that was it. I mean, <laughs> another yeah. one. Young wait, did, wait, 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 quiet. Did you put that in the book? I did. I did. Oh, good. And I, good. I, I, and I that is, also that is so funny. I, I put in the other story, which was that. I had a little beach house in the Hamptons, in West Hampton, which is not the so-called she-she one, but I loved it because it was the closest to New York. 90 minutes without traffic. Wow. Great. It's also called the Jewish Hampton. Remember that. Oh, West God. Well, no, no, wonder I, no, wonder I was, no wonder I was there. <laughs> That's right. There are more so Jews I'm, in West Hampton than anywhere else. Hey, go ahead. Tell the story. Anyhow, so I'm on the deck listening to music, and I say to this young girl, do you know who that is singing? And she said, sure. That's Natalie Cole's father. <laughs> <laughs> that That's funny. Cool. So the I, universe. I had, I, had a, I had a story like that. I, and this is going to relate to your friend. I, I used to do lectures in colleges, not colleges, but schools or wherever the hell they booked me. And I, and I got this guy sitting right on, on my face. And he's staring at me, and I'm talking, and I'm talking about Jane Russell. And I looked at him, I said, do you know who Jane Russell is? He said, no. I said, okay, do you know who Barbara Streisand is? No, but I've heard of her. <laughs> and I just thought to myself, get out of this room as fast as you can. <laughs> because you're blowing smoke out your ass. These yeah. kids don't know who the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. And they're <laughs> contemporary people. They weren't yeah. like my mother's fr Valentino and Anita Naldi. It wasn't yeah. those people. They're current. You know, Barbara That's Streisand. Right. You don't know Barbara Streisand. I mean, you got to be good. <laughs> you know, one of the things that people don't talk about in the silent movies, they really did some uh, very uh, kind of raunchy stuff that they got away with. If you ever look at the original Hunchback of Notre Dame with Lon Chaney, when they have the hunchback, they put him in kind of a place where you, they put your hands in and, and they're flogging him. Stockade. Stockade, thank you. And the camera pans to women and men kissing, kissing 
watching him being flogged. So, you know, it's a, it's a, a reason the code came in. It got a little crazy uh, <laughs> at one point, and they had to bring it in. Jane Russell and I spoke about this. I think it's in the interview. I'm not sure. And I said, um, do you think had Howard Hughes lived, he would have had you naked or something? And Jane said, oh, absolutely. She said, yeah. thank God for the, the code. Because she said, if they if there wasn't a code, they would have had me doing all kinds of things. Oh, yes. So a lot of actresses were happy that the code was there. Did you know that you were not allowed to be in bed a man and woman, they yes. had to have one foot on the floor. As long yeah. as you and had that, one and that's foot, a, and that's a and that's a married couple. Married that's couple married. in the movie. That's yeah. how strict they were. Yeah, we always my watched grand, my movies. They always have two beds. So my, it wasn't two when beds. my grandfather caught my mother at the Astoria Studios with my grandmother, my mother said a war broke out because my grandfather was Neapolitan and with a wild temper. He got my grandmother. He threw her across the room. If you ever, ever bring my daughter with those putane, those whores, because in Hollywood, that's all they are. My daughter's not going to be a putana. He made such an issue out of it because my mother was an extra at 10 years old in a movie. Where the hell was he coming from? So yeah. back then, they could get away with anything. Rudolph Valentino, um, who was gay, and lovers with Ramon Navarro, uh, they kept it really quiet. It never got out. No. Back then, no. Private lives were one thing on the screen. There was plenty of gays. Look at that gay actor. I forgot his name. Very gay, openly gay back in silent movies. Very um, rare. Very rare, as you said. You know, no, in, he, the, he, in he, the Son of the Sheik, Ron and Jimmy, yes. in the movie The Son of the Sheik, Valentino takes this actress, Agnes, Agnes Ayers, and right. he kidnaps her and takes him to his tent because he's a sheik. Right. And the card comes up, why have you brought me here? And the next card, he goes, blah, 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 and the card comes up and says, are you not woman enough to know? <laughs> right. <laughs> right, 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 right. My mother was crazy funny, though, in like love. That. I have such a Valentino collection of about 230 or 40 pictures stills that my mother used to buy for a buck each in New York City of Valentino. She's got newspaper clippings. I got a collection this big. I don't know what the hell to do with them. But I go, uh, once, uh, once, last year I went to the Valentino Memorial at the cemetery. Yes. And then to an you, after party. The cemetery. Is that, in, was that in Woodlawn? Is that Woodlawn Cemetery? Was it Woodlawn? No, Hollywood, oh. oh, okay. uh, right. yep. Hollywood Cemetery. Oh. The Hollywood Memorial Cemetery. Yes. And wow. I saw a collection of Valentino's things, a club chair that belonged to Valentino, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, they had a bunch of stuff. So they invited us this year, but I was on set, so I couldn't do it. But, uh, yes, you're right. Back then, there was anything went. Yeah, it Lois was true. Wants, she often spoke about that. So hang on one second, because we've only got a couple of minutes. So oh, I'm Julian, sure where the hell are you in. going? Uh, so he's going to do his TV show. So first of all, tell everybody, how do they see your show? It's called Movie Talk, and it's the same show you used to have many years ago, and you brought it back. Tell everybody, yeah. like, where do they see well, it? And thank you see, you. What good, see what a good yenta he is? That's well, how first, he is on the show. First, first of all, I want to thank you both for your friendship and the laughs love that you. I all... We love you, my favorite yakna. You're my favorite <laughs> yakna. <laughs> all, all I know is that I laugh. I knew I'd be laughing from beginning to end, and I did. Now, where you? Well, wait, me wait, too. Let's see. The question was asked. What, what, what's on? Oh yeah. Well, like you guys, uh, we're on Amazon. We're on Spotify. We're on Pandora. We're on uh, Pandora and I, I Heart, uh, Audible. In your that ear. Is, this is us. Everything. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> anyway, we're every. <laughs> Wherever podcast the podcasting, I guess. Anyhow, well, guys. Ago and what said, about the video? You have videos on YouTube, right? Yeah, video. Oh, Jimmy, honestly, I really should hire you to really work with me. Because <laughs> I <laughs> need you to. Videos are on YouTube, you guys. He's also on Red Circle. If you listen to him on Red Circle, he can, he can make some money, you guys. So listen to him on Red Circle or Apple Podcasts. Um, He's got great guests, great insights, uh, and it's very cool. Um, you want to get his book, my first book, part two, A Producer's Life Continues. 
Uh, on Amazon, you guys get the first book. Try not to hold it against me, A Producer's Life, so you can get them both. But they really do have great stories. They're very well put together. Um, and, and if you really like old Hollywood uh, and old Broadway and stuff like that, these are really the books for you. You know, Don't use the word old. Well, if you like past light, well, no, Broadway from no, the past. No, you just like the history. Oh, history. That's good. I history. like that. Old is not. Old is an ugly word. But if you like the history of Hollywood, then like you like this show because a lot of times I talk about the history of Hollywood. Well, Julian does it with his guests. If they're old or elderly, he gets that kind of a story. But most of them, are, you know what? Go. I, mi go. I miss the Isabella Rossellini one, and I adore her, love and worship her. I'm She's gonna, fabulous. I want to listen to that one. How was she? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know who Isabella you were. Isabella Rossellini, how was she on your show? Isabella Rossellini. Oh, Isabella, oh, she's so, you'll love her. She's so terrific. We talk about Ingrid Bergman, her mom. We talk about Roberto Rossellini, her dad. And I didn't realize that uh, Rossellini actually gave Fellini one of his first jobs. So yeah, I find out a lot of interesting things about the history of it. You guys are great, but I have to go do another yeah, show. Yeah. And I know, I I know. Right now, it won't be as much fun as I just had. That I know. Good. Well, good. Thank you so much, Julian. Bye -bye. Julian, I'm going to call yes. you. I'm going to call you. I have to talk to you about a few things. Please do, right, please do, and I'll call bye, you guys. General, sir, sir yes, General. Bye. Okay. bye bye, Julian. Thank you. <laughs> bye, Julian. Stay well, my friend. What a cool guy. Yep. You guys, in the book, really is good. Um, so I think you'll enjoy it. Chat room, some people joined us. I'm not sure who because it went so fast. But thanks, everybody, for, for uh, saying all the different stuff and how much you love his stories. Um, I'm not sure who I saw. I think I saw some people jump in there. But anyway, um, so now we have a few minutes. We can take a few minutes. Uh, actually, let's, ta let's take a little break and let's play a little music video. I have um, to mess my hair. I can't stand looking okay, at it. Okay, mess it. Okay, mess it for <laughs> everyone. I like it messy, too. So, you guys, we're going to play Chaz Robinson. Uh, he was a guest on our show a while, well, actually many years ago, but I, I just found this video and I thought it was fun. So this is Without You, Chaz Robinson, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Enjoy. <laughs> Yeah. 
we lied We didn't say what we meant Sometimes promises Go kept Just because we learned We didn't say what we meant We didn't say what we meant Now that I'm without you Standing here alone without you The more I think, the more I doubt you Can you be rolling down? Hey, hello everybody. So that was Chaz. Um, Chaz Robinson, without you. Uh, he's actually a great artist. His album is great. You guys should check it out. It's on Apple Podcast, uh, Apple iTunes or whatever you call it. There you go. Um, so what's up, everybody? we got a really fun guest. He's coming on in a little bit. He's not supposed to come on until 110. Um, he's the DJ producer. Last time he was on, uh, Ashley Paul was on with him. And uh, I was thinking that maybe we would play. Um, Why are you at a Red Cabra Ranch? Look, you're, not, you're not in, in, in <sighs> I am in camera range. There's too much of my left. Oh, well, there's nothing I can... That's just because of the way the chairs fit. I can move this up a little bit, too. There. So my head doesn't get chucked off. Either way, um, so you guys, last time we had uh, uh, Mark Love Rush on, he was on with Ashley Paul, and they had a big hit song. The name of the song was Hearts Up. We're going to play it for you, and he'll probably be uh, coming on right after it comes I over. I hate this hair. Um, I'm going to so, get a scissor right now and cut it on the air. So enjoy, <sighs> you guys. This is Hearts Up by Ashley Paul and Love Foundation, which is Mark Love Rush. Enjoy. Close your eyes and hold on to There's only love 
This episode of the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell is brought to you by BetterHelp. Give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com slash Jimmy and get on your way to being your best self. What do you do to take care of yourself on a daily basis? Maybe you never skip a leg day or therapy day. When your schedule is packed with kids' activities, big work projects, and more, it's easy to let your priorities slip. Even when we know what makes us happy, it's hard to make time for it. But when you feel like you have no time for yourself, non-negotiables like therapy are more important than ever. Therapy has helped me tremendously in my earlier days. It was helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It is not just for people who have experienced major trauma. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Never skip therapy day with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Jimmy today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Jimmy. Yay, everybody. So that was Ashley Paul and Love Foundation. The name of the song was Hearts Up. And in a few minutes, Mark Love Rush is going to come on. Your hair looks nice like that. I like it when you make it all messy. Yeah, but it's cut wrong. It has to be recut. That's okay. It'll be recut. No, no matter what happens, it'll go back back to where it was. See? <laughs> That's funny. You gotta like love it. All right. Cut that way. So now we're gonna bring a good up- haircut. By the way, you never have to set a good haircut because I used to be a hair cutter and a hairdresser. A good haircut, you just wash your hair, do this, and it becomes a hair a hairdo. I'm losing all my hair, so mine just does whatever. <laughs> Well, you could say, well, it's not that bad, or you could say, you know, you don't care, or something, you know instead what? of just, well. <laughs> you know what? In every relationship, there's a beauty. I know. We, we, no, we're not doubting that. Everybody says you're the beauty, so Get I'm not like, here. worried about that. You're beautiful. I love you. You're so uh, handsome, it's just uh, It's going away, and there's nothing I can really you do. You know what? So. You're going to look handsome, bald. Um, I don't care. I, I don't actually care, like, because I'm not... I know you don't uh, care. I'm not as... Um, worried about my looks. Neither am I. That's because you're gorgeous, so you don't need to be worried about not, your looks. I used to be gorgeous when I was young. No, you're still gorgeous. No, so, I'm chat not. room, what's up? We're going to bring out our next guest. His name is Mark Loverush. He's calling in from the UK, and I think he's here because I see it says, Welcome, Mark. We'll be with you shortly. So, let him in. Let him in, Juan. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Hello, hello. hello. Good, Jay. How you doing, guys? Oh, uh, we're fantastic. It's so good to see you and that fabulous smile. You look like you're dressed for the military. I oh, know that's what? flowers or something. Uh, Pull your head off for a minute. Show, show us your hair. I know you ha- don't want to take There you go. There we go. Now take off your shirt. Show us your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, so we just played out. Oh, oh, oh. Cut to the chest. Yes, just take down your pants. That'll, <laughs> that'll give us a big rating. <laughs> so hold on, we gotta introduce Mark everybody. Now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, Club Promotions Manager, Artist, DJ Extraordinaire, Mark Love Rush. Hello and welcome back to the show. I can't believe Thank you, you came back. Me, yeah. I cannot believe you came back knowing that I'm gonna make you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I love so it. We, we have a chat Bye, room right. for people, so say hi to everybody in the chat room. Hello to everyone. How are you doing? There you do go. you still have the same boyfriend? Of course I do. 23 years. Husband. 23 years husband. Oh, 23 years. Good for you. Actually, his husband's yeah. coming on in like two it, weeks. It's time to cheat. No, his He's husband's coming, coming on in two weeks, weeks time. time. He's after coming on 23, two weeks time. After 23 years of the same old, same old, you need to revive yourself with something new and exciting. Try an 84-year-old man. <laughs> yeah. It's not happening. <laughs> so how are you? How's the weather in the UK right now? Uh, awful, because we just keep getting the tail end of your hurricanes. It is oh, just, really? Very hot, yeah, right? He's just, getting the tail end of all our hurricanes. Really? Yeah, we're just, we've, our summer has just been rain, rain, and rain. We've not even had a summer. Yeah, we're in Palm Springs, so we don't get the rain. Like we're in Palm Springs, so we don't ever get rain. I we wish it would rain. Have you ever been to Palm Springs? No. Oh, when you come, wear a chastity belt. Actually, I would think you and Ashley would like be popular here because oh, they have so many gay pride. When things. the queens see this guy, they're going to attack. 
Of course they are. I mean, if I ever brought you to the gay club here, you'd have all the fairies running over saying, oh, what's your name? What's your name? What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> and it would be fun, and he would like love it. I like think it's terrific. Have you been to the United States before? Yeah, I've been to Hollywood quite a few times. Uh, Las Vegas, uh, New York, um, Miami. Uh, mostly, yeah. uh, mostly coming to DJ, right? Um, yeah. Well, apart from New York, New York was just more for um, just you know, just like a tourist tourist thing. But Hollywood. I was born I was born uh, last in Vegas, Las Vegas. I had my name on the um, strip in um, at the Rain Club in um, Las Vegas. I had a headline on the. Uh, oh, that was and, nice. Yeah, really good. I like that. So my yeah. first, uh, my first big DJ f festival thing that I went to, um, I, I went to the festival. I don't even remember what it was called, but then they had this thing called the Dance Star USA Awards, and it had all the biggest like Paul Oakenfold and. Bunny Rabbit in the Moon and like all these like cool people and it was the we had the best time ever. We I was with my friend Ozzy who's also from the UK and uh, we walked the red carpet with Carmen Electra and Nick Carter from the Bass Street Boys and and uh, Dave Navarro and all these like fun people. But it was a blast meeting all the big DJs. I didn't really know who who they were until I went there. Now afterwards, I figured out, I found out how what a big deal they are. But what are some of your favorite DJs? Well, Paul Oakenfold signed my first record. Oh, that's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. He signed it up with, um, so with Mark, with Mark oh. Coleman from Soft Sound. Oh, yes. Yeah. Tainted Love. Yeah. Tainted Love, Mark Rod Coleman. Rodney Stone, who came here with his girlfriend for dinner. Uh huh. His son is a famous DJ. Okay. What's his name? I don't know. Okay. It's not his father's Which? name. He's got some weird name, but he travels all over the world as a DJ. Very famous American yeah. DJ. So what do you like better, doing DJing like live in front of big crowds or, or being in the studio and just reworking everybody's? Um, so, so not, so much, not so much DJing anymore, kind of like more producing and obviously doing the kind of like uh, background stuff, kind of like basically promoting the stuff that, you know, we're doing with Ashley Paul and Love Foundation. I think that's more thrilling for me to see the rewards from, you know, getting the response of what, the feedback. I mean, since Hearts Up, it's just been mental. It's been if, ever get, if ever you get bored with being a DJ, I Producer. can I, I can get you in a club in a speedo dancing on the bar. <laughs> I bet you could. <laughs> and, you'd make, and, you'd, and you'd make a lot, a lot of money. A lot of money. Actually, in the chat room, they're asking, have you heard anything about Felix John canceling everything due to his health? That must be a famous DJ. I don't know who that is, though. Oh, Felix Shahar. Uh, no, um, it's, it's, I mean, I, I work in club promotions, so I do a lot of like promotions. I promote people like Calvin Harris, Gordon City, all the like all the top artists and stuff. But I don't unfortunately get to meet them. Um, oh, Calvin Harris was at that thing that I was at too. Paul Van Dyke, Paul Oakenfold, mm -hmm. Calvin Harris was there. Um, I don't know. There was a bunch of cool like DJs. Are you married? Are you married? Yes, he just told yes. me for twenty sure. years. Listen, are you are you him? When I talk to him, why do you answer? What are you, the puppet? Because he just told you he was married for twenty years. There's a joke behind it, you silly fruit. Oh, okay. <laughs> are you married? Uh, he blew the joke. There's no point. No point. He Go on, that's a joke. Go on. I can't. The joke won't work now because he opened his big fucking mouth. <laughs> well, everybody will work. Meanwhile, Go what on. does your husband do? Um, Lee was in a famous boy band uh, called Two Thirds um, in the 90s. And now he's just literally come into his last two weeks of his um, final um, nurse degree. So he's nurse now. So he's coming on next week. He's, he's coming in two weeks. weeks. Two weeks. Is, he, is he as cute as you are? He's absolutely stunning. That's why I'm still with him. Well, how about a three way? <laughs> <laughs> I actually already downloaded. Do you know that in Palm Springs, that's all they do three ways. Jimmy and I run from them. No, really, we go to the community. You know, we we live in a gated community, so we go to the country club pool, and it's like all gay men. We're eighty percent gay. Our development, and they all are kissing, and oh my god, they're all like swapping and doing all kinds of shit that we don't do. We're like outcasts. Yeah, we're like outcasts, but. But no, his 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 husband is cute, and I already downloaded two two thirds videos that we're going to play when he comes on the show, and uh, getting. I'm happy for that it. you're still in live, uh, in live, in love after 23 years. 
Well, um, the, the th- I think that I can't remember if I told you before, but that basically um, when I was like 15, was li- when Will Lee was out as a famous you know pop star, and I kept seeing him in clubs, but I was a bit too young. So when it got to my 21st, I think I told you the story. When I got to my 21st yeah. birthday, we met in Heaven Nightclub on my um, 21st birthday, and uh, we've been married ever since. So are you, are, you are, you jealous? are you jealous of him? No, not at all. There's so, no so jealousy. Some young, no jealousy in our relationship some young hot guy starts talking to him in a club. Do you get involved? Do you get, get in between and say, hey, back uh, no, 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 no. I mean, if someone like flatters or batters an eyelid and all that, like you just take it with tongue in cheek. Do you know what I mean, we're so we're so close knit. We're like we're we're best friends. We're soulmates. It's it's when, when Jimmy and I go to a club, he has to get a hammer and beat them off me. They're in the hundreds all over me, adoring me, worshiping me. We don't go out to that treasure many clubs, me. But he's not lying. Like we'll go to clubs. And literally, like, if I'm standing here and he's standing there, people will literally walk in front of me so they're in front of me standing next to him to talk to him like I don't even exist. And I fucking hate that. I want to fucking just That's pound and break their heads. because they know open. who I am. No, they don't. They didn't have any idea who you were. They were just fucking hitting on you because they liked you. They all, he gets hit on every, But he gets hit on by guys and girls and everything. Cause of, There's a lot of guys out there who like older men. Yeah. So, um, so, so, How so, so about you? <laughs> I said, how about you? How do you feel about older men? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want everybody to know, I just tease and kid around about this. If he, he ever said, okay, I, did it to me I would run. So you guys can follow Mark on Instagram. He's MarkLoveRush79. You can also follow Love Foundation. So tell us what exactly is Love Foundation? Because you guys get credited with a lot of huge hits. Um, and, and you're like half of Love Foundation, right? Yeah. So um, Love Foundation started in 2023. Our first record was with Mary Kiani. Um, she had quite a few big hits in the 90s and stuff. So I, you know, brought her back out of, um, into the um, to the club scene. We, we've got had a track called I Feel You. Um, and then it kind of like roller coasters. And then we got a hold of Ashley's Bingo Baby and did the remix on that. And then I said to Ashley, can we just work with you? And obviously we did Hearts Up. But since we've spoken to you last, we've had two new singles out, Dance You Gotta and Dance For Your Life. Uh, the reactions are just massive. Ashley's actually in the UK. I've actually physically met her. Hand oh, hand. yay! That's she good. Can't keep, she can't keep her hands off me and she can't <laughs> understand the fact I'm gay. She just doesn't get it. <laughs> Not everybody gets that. How do you how, do? You like a man in a uniform? Uh, no. Oh, too bad. I was going to say, watch my movie. Clown <laughs> out yet. He I plays play, a general. I play general Milan. He just I'm shot a, a movie. I'm in a general's uniform. I, I, I don't mind dressing up in uniforms because obviously I do. I, I I dabbled in acting as well. I've been in Bridgerton. I've been in Peaky Blinders. I've, you know, nineteen. Oh, you were in Peaky Blinders. What else were you in? Nineteen Seventeen. Sam Mendes is nineteen seventeen. Uh, Rebecca um, for ne- on Netflix, the remake of Rebecca. Um, oh God, loads. Paul Dark. Um, now, do you, do you talk in any of them? Or are you an extra, or do you talk? Yeah, yeah supporting artist. But um, in Bridgerton, they gave me the role of the Earl of Gloucester. Oh, that's good for you. So, is that something yeah. you actually will pursue? Because I could see you doing that. Actually, I can always go back to it, but go back to it. But I just kind of like knocked it on the head. I was like when I was doing Bridgerton, it was a very stressful job. It was, I have to say, doing sixteen-hour-long days was quite strenuous. Are you including me? I'm eighty-four years old, and I just shot an eighteen-hour day in Nevada in the heat in a uniform. In the, yeah. Yeah, you know what you know what it's like, man. It's just it's, I, have, it's, it's, I, have it's, a, I have a script you might be interested in. Oh, it's yeah, about it's a elderly man who picks up a gorgeous young man yeah, and they're really. having wild sex, and uh, a young man falls in love with the old man. Okay, that that's been done a hundred times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So wait, now you have a new song. I, I wrote it down, and I don't know. I think it's called "Dance You Gotta." Yeah, "Dance You Gotta." Yeah, yeah, it's out right um, now. It's you guys, Love Foundation, and Bootleg Boys. I took the video, but I don't know if it's the whole video, but it's like almost three minutes, but it's whatever was on YouTube. Is it got um, a stick in it? 
Yeah, I think so. I don't oh. remember. I, I don't actually remember. So tell us a little bit about the song because we'll let everybody hear it. Right, so there's a massive story behind Dance You Gotta and Dance For Your Life. And you're going to love this. So I, when I was in, I was a bit of a naughty boy when I first came on the gay scene because I went out on the gay scene when I was only 15, managed to get into all the clubs and stuff like that. No, no, you were an altar boy? Wait, stop. You were an altar boy? No. Didn't you no, just say you were an altar boy? I was quite a naughty boy. <laughs> a naughty boy. Oh, I thought he said altar boy. I was like, boy, was that priest lucky? <laughs> so there's um i used to go to this club called trade and um tony db um i'm not sure if you're familiar with him he died of aids in 1998 um when he was just becoming really really successful so he used to play this record and i reached the uh, reached out to the producers who wrote the um, who wrote the record and i said what are you doing with the record now and they said nothing i said well can we use the music and give it to ashley and lucas to write a brand new top line so the, the backing music is actually from 1994 and then they had this double A, uh, double A side called Last Tune of the Night. And Last Tune of the Night was the last tune played in all the gay London clubs as the last record of the night. So Dance for Your Life, basically. So they give us permission to use both tracks. Ashley and Lucas wrote the tracks around it. Um, and they've just become monsters, absolutely monster, monster hits. So who are the bootleg boys? Is that Lucas or who's? Uh, no, this um, the, 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 it's called, uh, DJ called Keith Mack um, and Matt Clayden. Okay, so that's the bootleg boys. So is yeah. Love Rush the real last name? Love Rush I inherited when I was eighteen. His real last name is Schneider, I think. Yes, it is. Yes. So you're Jewish or German? I'm German. Right. Well, Schneider could be Jewish Yes, it could be German. either. So wait, yeah. you know, wait a minute. why did you pick Love Rush? In other words, if you make love to me, am I going to get a rush? Exactly. That's the whole point of the name. <laughs> what do you say? Exactly. That's the whole point of the name. <laughs> so wait, we're going to talk more. We're just going to play this song, you guys, and then we're going to come you back. You know I'm lesson. only kidding around. I want you I to know. know. I mean, but I think you're a sweetheart anyway. Oh, I think thank you're you. so nice. Oh. You're so nice to let me do this. So a, lot of, a lot of guys, you know, they get a little freaked out. Annoyed. <laughs> no, no. Uh, so here's, here's what we're going to do. But you know what? People that watch our show love this because they're thinking the same thing I'm saying. When I say, like, if I say you're so cute, I'd love to kiss you for hours. There's a lot of people out there saying, me too, me too, me too. <laughs> so I'm the voice of the public. I no, I don't worry about that. Don't worry about that at all. Right, so, we'll keep so throwing that way. I'm going to have Mark introduce the song one, and you're going to play the one that says Dance You Gotta by Ashley Paul Love Foundation Bootleg Boys. Yeah, uh, so, this is, so this is Ashley Paul X Love Foundation UK X The Bootleg Boys. It's a long word. Dance You Gotta, and it's out right now. Stream it. Enjoy, Enjoy everybody.
That is very good club music. I 30 years ago, I could have danced to that all night. <laughs> no, it's very good. Now I just tap my foot. And you guys also do fun video. Like, like the, the videos are fun. So the concept to that for me, I wanted to go, I really wanted to create something. For, it was almost like it felt like it, it was from the 90s. And I thought of like, you know, the stick men and just like bringing them to life. And then we've got this new concept, the Dance for Your Life video. It's going to be in the subway and there's going to be hundreds of stick men dancing in the subway. And then there's going to be graffiti with like Dance for Your Life, Don't Depend on Me. Um, and all these kind of like lyrics kind of like popping up, like they're all like graffiti come out the wall going to look amazing, which will be ready for you, for you to see. I love it when you actually, when it's ready, let me know. Cause we'll play it. Um, for yeah. everybody. You know, I think it's just fun the way, cause I, even the hearts up video, you know, like they're like lyric videos that are put together extremely well. And they don't look like a lyric video and they're a lot yeah. of fun. And it's easier for you to do those. Right. Cause uh, like that way you guys don't have to actually. Sh- I would like to see you in a video in a G string. <laughs> <laughs> Dancing. In my you- son. Records. <laughs> so, so basically, have you always wanted to be a DJ? Because you've worked with some really big people, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But um, like this thing you always yeah, I mean, you know, when I moved to London, when I moved to London, and then you know, like when I used to go to clubs like t- um, trades, uh, Tony DeBee was kind of like the the DJ that I looked up to. Unfortunately, he died of AIDS, but um, he was the DJ I looked up to. And when I was eighteen, I got my first decks. Um, and I did start like DJing in bars and stuff. And then I you started getting a few residencies in places like XL, XXL um, in London, the Eagle Bar in London as well. And there's. Uh, Those and sound like, all, like they all sound like leather bars, like trades, that automatically. That just sounds like a. Like <laughs> they a, pretty much were. Yeah, they hustler bar. Were. <laughs> and then the Eagle, we have an Eagle, like, so that's like a leather bar. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't know from <laughs> such things. Oh yeah, right. You wouldn't know. No, I think that's funny as hell, though. So, so I used to go to gay bars called Cinderella. Yeah, right. <laughs> like some of the people, because I'm old now, but like some of the you are, you are. I want him. Some of the some of the British people that I like. I was always like a Jimmy Somerville, Communards fan. Like I used yeah. to love Jimmy Somerville and the Communards. Um, New Order was like a big, you know, band that people would do stuff with, you know, and. Uh, we would always go see them in concert and stuff, and they were all like, "Great!" Like, who are some of your influences? You know, when you were like, "Yeah, you still look." I mean, you said you've been together for twenty three years, and you met him when you were twenty one. Like, you don't look any. You look like you're like twenty five years old. <laughs> Thank you. I've just had a, I've just had a hydro facial, so probably that's what uh, what it is. <laughs> yeah. But like, um, who are some of the people that you like? You know why he well, looks young? You know why he looks young? Because he has a great laughter mechanism. He laughs, and the body loves laughter. The more you laugh, the healthier the body is. You know. I agree with that. Um, for me, um, when I was a kind of like my my mum hated me because I plastered my room in E seventeen. I was obsessed. Yeah. with E seventeen. I love E seventeen. Yeah, I was absolutely how obsessed. How, how old are they? I don't know. Like they're all that's they were around ninety nineteen ninety. I think about ninety two to ninety. Five or ninety six, well, the real ones. The, you know, so I, I'm like a, I am like a total boy band like lo- lover. Like I yeah. love boy bands. I used to go to England and I I would spend all my time buying all the the uh, the different bands. You know, like all the boy bands, which I had never heard of two thirds, by the way. But like I like all, all the other ones that everybody kind of like knows. And Bros, I love Bros like a yeah. lot. Uh, yeah. Bros was a really big one for me. E seventeen was a big one for me. All the regular ones like uh, um, take that and all the derivatives of take that. <laughs> yeah, see, that, that's for me. For me, was kind of like the uh, the opposite. I was pretty much into E right, seventeen. Two thirds, unfortunately, when they were just starting to become successful, Lee dropped out the band, and obviously because he dropped out the band and he was the lead singer, there was no more band. So it was kind of it was it was unfortunate that Lee pulled out when they were just literally becoming successful. But um, th- I'm, I was into things like Juice. I mean, more dance acts like JX, Live and Joy. You know, all the '90s Live stuff. Is a good one. Live and Joy is a good one. Um, I, I knew a bunch of them. Like I don't. I'm old now, so I don't listen to like a lot of the dance music. But we we have a lot of fun guests on. Like I said, Tracy Young. You know, is yeah. a friend of ours. She's a great DJ. Um, 
Uh, and we like dance music because he loves dance music. He did. A, I went know. to a lot of dance clubs in London, and the one that was a big, far, far, far big deal was Richard Burton's wife's bar. What was that one called? He's not going to know who Richard Burton is. He's Richard Burton. Enough. You don't know who Richard I don't Burton know who Richard is because Burton you told me last time that I sound like him. And his wife, uh, what the hell was her name? Sybil. 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 Oh. Sybil was like the Studio 54 of London, and it was right. called Sybil. John Collins was always in Sybil's. You know who John Collins is? Yes, the yeah. actress. Oh. That I don't know. Actually, in the chat room, they're writing Five, which I liked Five a lot. There was another band boy band that I was just listening to the other day because I have all their music even though they haven't been together in a long time called Blazing Squad and I used to love Blazing yeah. Squad back in the day but I like all that kind of stuff, the oh, you, stuff know, you know you know, Five Five actually um, uh, um, Richie Neville from Five actually co-wrote um, Ashley's Bingo Baby oh that's cool Yeah, that I like so Five was a big group and A1 I liked A1 um, yeah so you like more, you, you you like the more poppier sides? Yeah, you know, I like the, I like the, the popular sides, Christian. and you like the poppier sides. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, but then we also have uh, I like I like a lot of the dance music that like Black Box and stuff like that that was popular. Black like Box. That. Oh, Black legendary. Box was a really good one. And we actually had Martha Wash on our show, and we've had some of those you know people from those groups on the show in the past. Yeah. Um, so I wrote down some of the people that you've actually. Uh, you did a dance hit, so I love Marcella Detroit. I don't know if that's how you pronounce her name, uh, yeah. but that I knew. I don't know who Shelly Harlan is, Sylvia Tosun, Carla Warner, Brian Adams, everybody knows, Paul Oakenfold, Maury Conte, Molly Bancroft, and then I wrote down that you remixed artists like uh, Chicane, 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 I don't know, BT, BT we know, Paul Oakenfold we yeah. know, uh, Moby we know, um, Tiesto we know, I met Tiesto, Airscape, Bizarre Inc., that was a good one. Yeah. Um, Delirium. And, um, it's, 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 I, I did, it's, I'm not sure if it's on there, but I did a remix. So basically, I did a remix for Paul Oakenfold's track called Firefly, which featured Matt Goss from Bross. And this is what led me to Las Vegas. Um, I did this remix, and then Paul Oakenfold made the our remix, the original version, and it's had like, I think, nearly 2 million streams on YouTube or whatever it was. And it went to number one in, and number one in the club charts in the UK. And Matt Goss personally called my office to say thank you and asked me to perform the my version of Firefly at the Royal Albert Hall with him when he was doing his Matt Goss gig. Oh my god, then, I love Matt Goss. His brother, like Luke, is a big actor now. Uh, yeah. they follow me on social media, but I they ignore me when I tell them I want him to come on the show. But I like I haven't a them. clue as to and, any. Uh, of so these now people. Ashley Paul has joined us in the chat room, you guys. So let's everybody give a shout out to Ashley Paul. Hi, Hello, Ashley. Ashley. Yay. Just to let you know, Ashley, we played Hearts Up and um, Dance You Gotta uh, during the show to, to promote you and your fabulousness. And uh, she said she's going to open for E17 September 14th, which I love. Yes, e she so, she is indeed. She is indeed, yes. Good for but, her. Um, like I said, Ashley, Ashley's been over here all summer. She's been absolutely smashing it. She's like performed at Glasgow Pride, Southampton Pride. I mean, this a whole string of shows she's done. And uh, she is a powerhouse. I mean, one of the main actresses, um, Cheryl Ferguson, um, she was um, in the back room and she said, what a powerhouse that girl is. No, no, she absolutely. A powerhouse. Yeah. She was on our show January 6th. You'll remember her. I um, remember she's her. fabulous. She's very sweet. And the, the music is just really good. And I think it's just getting better and better. Like, I think the more you guys work together, the better the music gets. This Can is I called the generation gap. Secret. Yes. This is, this is called the generation gap. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Go ahead. Do you know the name Donna Giles? Yes. Who, the drag queen that died of AIDS. Yes. And Donna she did a Giles? And she, yeah. Her. Yeah, huh? in 1993. She did a rendition of And I'm Telling You, I'm Not Going. Uh -huh. We have permission, this is exclusive, we have permission to use um, Ashley to merge her vocal with the Donna Giles vocal and we're bringing a brand new version of it out and we're going to play it exclusively yeah. on your show in two weeks' time. Oh, that's awesome. That's very exciting. It's a great, 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 great song. It's a fabulous song. And I'm telling you, you know the song, and I'm telling you, 
And I'm telling the Jennifer oh, Hudson Jesus, not from, from Dream Girls. Well, no, it's not really from Dream Girls, but yeah, it's a, well, a huge song. And I'm telling you, I'm not going. Jennifer Hudson sang it in Dream Girls. Oh, I know. This but song. it's an old song from I other love people. that song. Um, so that's fantastic. So and, and it's, actually being, it's actually being released. It's Donna Giles, Ashley Port, and Love Foundation. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Those names are foreign. Oh well, you don't know the boy bands. That's okay. I'm I'm talking. I never about knew the boy there bands. was a thing called a boy band. Backstreet Boys, In Sync, Ninety Eight Degrees. I like In Sync. The reason I like all this stuff, so I'm and I like Jabot. I'm working on a. Uh, They're not boy bands, Jabot. Jabot, I don't know who that is. You didn't know who Jabot was? No, Jabot's a. Oh, clothing Jabot was a clothing designer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working. On, I'm, on. I'm working on a movie. Um, the working title is it's a werewolf movie, and uh, Ron's going to be in it. But um, half of the cast is going to be famous boy band members. Oh, okay. Um, from Instinct, Backstreet Boys. I'm going to be the gen like mother. that. And so, oh, so uh, is, there, is there no room for me to be in the movie? I don't know yet. I, I'm still working on it. Right now, we're getting it. We're, re we're rewriting part of it. We just got an A-list director to, to, to be on it. So, But we're going to bring a bunch of cool boy band people in. And I think it would be fun like like uh, to get like uh, Luke Goss or, or his brother in it and things like You're gonna that. You're going to get also. his husband, right? Yeah, or his husband. My husband, yeah, well, me. Well, and you'll be, with his, you'll be with your husband, right? And then you'll get yeah. to come and in. And I'll have a chance to meet you. How many drinks does it take to get you plastered? Oh, yeah, right. Like, really drunk. Quite Quite you don't know what's going on. Uh, no, I never get into that state. I don't either. Everybody <laughs> no. in the chat loves the yeah. boy band thing. They all love the boy band thing. So, <laughs> so let's, let's do a hypothetical. And you can't yeah. say Ashley since it's already happened and you're already working with her. But if you could, you as you personally or you as Love Foundation – could go in and uh, work with any artist. Live, give us a living artist and a dead artist that you think would be so much fun to like work with and remix. You know, any of their songs. It doesn't matter. You don't have to tell. Well, us I'm going to put this one here right now, right here now, because I think this is pretty much going to happen. Taylor Dane. Oh, that's awesome! We actually just saw her what in concert that? not too long ago. Taylor Dane. We saw her here in concert. She's been on the show twice, but a long Would time ago. Her? Yeah, she was Stevie B. She was with Stevie B. She was oh, one of those acts with Stevie show. B. Oh, Stevie B. Oh, yeah. Uh, Taylor Dane is a, is phenomenal. I had yeah. a good time. Amazing. Um, I, I, think, I mean, I, I absolutely love every track that she had in the 80s. It was, you know, amazing. She's a great, great woman. Yeah, she's and the, the track, and one of the tracks on the album, um, Do You Want It Right Now, actually became a famous, someone covered it, and then that became a huge famous 90s record. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, do you I, remember, remember, yeah. I can remember like so I lived in Fort Lauderdale and we had this this club that right over the original over the river. I forgot what it was called, but like Taylor Dane played there, Expose, everybody played there. Which actually we're really good friends with Expose. Um the girls from Expose. I don't know if you know who okay. they are, but I, I, I know, know the name. I'm not familiar with them though. They had um they were actually one of the biggest selling girl groups of all time before Destiny's Child. They mm -hmm. had like a you know, come go with me. Point of no return. I don't know. They have a bunch of hits, but anyway, expose. Look them up because yeah. uh, they, they're good ones in there. They had lost the right to their name, you know, and they they won a, a legal battle. It took them forever to be able to perform, you know, uh, under the name. But they've got at least eight top ten hits uh, okay. on Billboard, not just on Dance. Um, yeah. They had the Free Willy song for the movie Free Willy, but they're fun. So okay, so Taylor Dan's a living one. You got a dead one. <laughs> oh. <gasps> um oh um oh i have to think now i'm trying to think who's dead taylor Dean, uh, was a i'm trying to think who's um i mean I'd, if donna giles i mean donna uh, giles i mean for a drag queen and that voice i mean i would love to have done something with her she's got absolutely. an incredible voice do you um, remember Bizarre Inc.? Do you remember the band Bizarre Inc.? Yeah. They're so British. There's so many British bands. To me... No, I, uh, I, remixed it. I remixed it with Bizarre Inc. That's, oh. what, that's what they call the British Invasion. When the Beatles came here... You don't know this shit because you weren't born. But uh, <laughs> when the Beatles came here, it was called the British Invasion because the Turtles came with them and all a bunch of other stupid groups with stupid names. Yeah. The same music. They all sounded like I want to be 
whatever that the Beatles. The Beatles I want to hold your hand. I want to hold your hand. Every one of them sounded like that song. They changed yeah. a few notes here and there, and they all had bangs. How original! When I was really young, and I was in the in England, I was in a store, and I heard this song, um, and I thought, "Oh my God, this is like the greatest song ever!" I loved it so much, um, and I went and bought it because I was like at one of the record stores, and and then, and I met this guy, and I was talking to him, and and it ended up that it was Jamiroquai, and uh, and I love Jamiroquai. You don't know, you know, oh, you're not a fan of Jamiroquai? Oh, I love Jamiroquai. <laughs> I mean, I like it. Uh, it's Maybe not my, it's not, my like. it's not, it's my not dancey enough, though. It's probably not dancey enough either for you. Well, I'm not in, just in style. And like I said last time I spoke to you, I'm into people like Kate Bush and, um, you know, Mark Armand. Um, um, it's just, I don't, it's, it's a bit too jazz house for my liking. Okay. I've never really been a very good fan of it. How was working with Mark Allman? So Mark Allman is the is the singer for a band called Soft Cell that he worked with, and you know that song "Tainted Love." Oh, oh, oh. He's actually, he's actually, he's actually, I know it doesn't sound like that, <laughs> but you worked with him. Yeah, so he's Mark actually Allman, he's actually a very dear friend of mine as well. Oh, he's cool. Yeah, I've um, known him. For, I've known him. For, well, screw all of you. Screw the both of you. I was in Johnny Mantis's company three times. I bet he doesn't know who Johnny Mathis is. I know the name. You know the name. I'm going to kill you with whatever I need you. <laughs> That's his favorite singer is Johnny Mathis. Johnny Mathis has, is bigger than Frank Sinatra. Johnny oh, Mathis. no, we had this conversation last time, and I, yeah, I don't you know. Have to, you have to look him up. Just look him up, Johnny Mathis. I'm still, still, still going to kill you when I see you. Oh, actually, Peggy Lee, Peggy Lee. Peggy Lee, I know it. I know, Falco. They said in the chat room they like Falco. Um, that, Tony, uh, Bennett. That's Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett. No, I'm not a fan of Tony Bennett. No. You don't know Tony Bennett. No, he's not, not a fan. Not a fan. Uh, why is it the crooner of the 1950s is no longer listened to? He is listened to. He just doesn't like him. <laughs> I want to know what it is about him you don't like. He's, it's just not my cup of tea. No, no, but it's an honest question, and I really would like an, an honest answer. What is it about his singing that you don't like? Too quiet, too slow, too corny? Um, I've never really paid much attention to it, so I can't really answer. Okay. He said he's never really paid any uh, much attention to it. So I think, you know, Tony Bennett had a big resurgence because he sang with Lady Gaga and that kind of yeah, the same way Tom Jones. You know, Tom Jones always sings with like modern day people. Yeah, I'm not even a fan of Tom Jones. What do you think? That's oh, the okay. question. Here's the question, Mark. What do you think of the music of my era, 40s, 50s, and 60s? Um, I've never really listened to it. Don't listen to it. Interesting. You know, in no, terms not, of... No, don't. Yeah. I haven't. She, he said he doesn't. He says he hasn't listened to it. Yeah, because in the past, there are things that you could use today. Just alter them a little bit. Because music, what can you do with music? The notes are the same. And they've been configured a million ways. Yeah. So I mean, all music, all music I mean, is relevant. When I when I was six years old, I used to be obsessed with Elvis Presley. But okay. See later, but right. I don't see. I'm not a fan of Elvis. No, Presley, Elvis so. Presley in my day. Yeah. So wait. So so the girls liked him. The guys didn't. So you yeah. pick Taylor Dane, and you pick Taylor Dane, and it might be coming true. Which is congratulations. I hope it does. We're putting out good vibes for you that it does. Um, Thank it's you. funny. That you picked an artist that's like you know been around for thirty or forty years. Is there is there any current people that you listen to that you kind of like? Like do you like Billie Eilish or I don't know any of the like people who are kind of like big now? Or do you don't uh, really, like I don't listen to a whole lot of it, so I don't know. Um, I more like eighties and nineties stuff. I'm more eighties and nineties stuff. I mean, I, I listen to so much music of like today's music because of the, the job that I work in. I work in club promotion, so I listen to the music. Right. Later, so it's for me. It's kind of like I'm constantly promoting that, you know, today's music. I'm, I'm one of the first people to get one of the records that come before they come out. So it's kind of like I'm always, no, I, I, I hear the music, but I'm not, like for me, I'm so 
eight, well, not eighties, nineties, um, you know, some seventies. I'm starting to delve into a bit of seventies now as well, which is, I think, as I'm getting older, I'm going a bit more back. Back. With the Backward. Yeah. Who's your favorite band of the eighties? Oh. Do you have a favorite? Oh, favorite band of the eighties. I used to love Depeche Mode. Oh, I love Depeche Mode. Yeah. Depeche I Mode. actually don't like all Depeche Mode. I like 80s Depeche Mode. Like, people are people. And yeah. 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 Like Depeche Depeche Mode. Mode. Um, Duran Duran. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know that one. Duran Duran. Actually, you've heard of Depeche Mode, too, I'm sure. Because your daughters listen to it a lot. Not all. Um, Duran Duran. Like uh -huh. Oh, Aha, uh -huh. I like a lot. It's kind of funny. Like, they Did only have like, one hit one. I, I used to like Ashford and Simpson. I like Ashford and Simpson. You know uh, them? That's no. too hard to probably for him. You so. never heard of Ashford and Simpson? I know, who, I know who they are. They were fabulous. They have a song called Solid as a Rock. Oh, solid, I was solid a, as I was, a rock. I was a competitive tennis player, and I would play uh, I would play that before I went on the court for years, you know, because I was a competitive. That was like my song, so that's why I know it. And he was an outrageously stunning gay man. He dressed, oh, my God, I used to want to copy all his clothes. He wore everything draped. His slacks were draped, his shirts. He was absolutely stunning. The best-dressed man I've ever seen was uh, was Simpson, Ashley. I don't know which one is which, unfortunately. And she, so, she was pretty also. So, um, I, I'm Hart as well, Hart. Oh, Hart's a great one. He knows Hart, too. He'll know that one. Did yeah. you like DeBarge? He likes DeBarge. Do you like um, DeBarge? No, and um, when my hair gets big, it goes a bit debarred. <laughs> so, I know where you are in music. You're in an entirely different place uh, than the commercial music. You're not commercial. You're club music. I'm not. I'm, well, I'm, I, I think I've got quite an eclectic set. I mean, my favorite, my favorite number one band of all time is Enigma. Oh wow. That's my favorite yeah, you one. Have, I've heard you, it. Yeah, you've heard their music. Yes. Do I like it? Um, it, was yeah. in, they were in, it was in. It was in all the Sharon Stone movies and stuff like that. It's so, like, if you were going to put mutant your music in a wherever, movie, what wherever, wherever there was a sex scene, there was Enigma. Yes, in all the Sharon Stone movies. Sex scene, sex scene. Yeah, there, there you go. Sex scene, sex scene. So, if you were gonna, if you could have put music in any movie that's ever been made, we only have two minutes. But what movie would you have liked to put music in? Like, what are some of your favorite movies that you think would be fun to put your music in? I love Basic Instinct. It's like my, my go-to movie. No, I, I know Basic Instinct. Yes. I just want to say something before we go off the air. Stop stop calling me. And stop with those love letters. I'm tired of it. <laughs> I'm not interested. I'm not I'm interested. I'm getting insulted that you're not actually replying back to me, Ron. No, you're, you're, <laughs> so, you're definitely not my type. And I couldn't stand living with you with that fucking accent. You know, that English accent would drive me well, crazy. You told me, you told me last time I was on, you said I love your accent because it reminds me of Richard Burton. <laughs> yeah, he probably did because he's like, a, he likes Richard I just, Burton. I just think that you're terrific. because I, I think you. that we, if we were all together at a party, we'd be laughing, peeing ourselves all night. Well, I can't wait. For you, I, can't, I seriously can't wait for you to meet Lee because he is... He's, he's, just, funny, he's just as bubbly as me. Just Good. as bubbly as me. I think, I think you're wonderful, and he must be wonderful. And uh, you know what? So many gay people are so depressed and sad. So yeah. when we meet each other and we can camp around and have fun with each other, it laughs. I love it. I've had a great time with you on both shows. So I'm Thank looking you. forward to your husband. Thank he's you. Doing with you. I'll dump you and go make play for him. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. You never so know. we're out of time. You guys, please follow Mark Until Love Rush. We'll find Mark out. Love Rush 79 on Instagram. Congratulations on you, uh, Love Foundation, and Ashley Paul's success. We love having you on. We want to thank Holly from ICTPR for uh, setting us up with this I'm whole thing. We'll, we'll see you. Yes, hi, and Holly. Mark, Mark, come back whenever you like. Yeah, we'll have you back. Thank you. We'll you are, the you are such a delight. Weeks. You're such a delight. I, you know, I absolutely, I absolutely it's, it's such an honor for me to come on this show. I, I love you two to pieces. I think it's, it's I so love, we, all, we both love yes, you. Yes, we think you're terrific. Yeah. Otherwise, we wouldn't Oops. have you back. No, no, no. <laughs> you're so every, you're terrific. You're everything a gay guy should be. 
except with me. That's what the mistake you made. <laughs> All right, Mark. We'll see you soon, everybody. We'll see you next week. We bye bye, Mark. To you too. Bye bye, you guys. Next week we have uh, Robert Lasardo and Jeffrey Ray coming on. You Robert guys. Lasardo. We'll see you next week. Bye everybody. Bye Mark. Bye bye Mark. You. See Take you next care. week, everybody. So Take care. Can try not to so in the mix, yeah we in the mix, it's another episode, here we go, the Jimmy Star Show, we're Ron Russell, interviewing the hottest, newest, and truest of today's celebrities, make sure to subscribe so you can get notified weekly, Jimmy Star, he's the king of cool, Ron Russell, he's a gorgeous dude, chat room is live and you would be a fool not to vibe with us at the Jimmy Star Show, we're Ron Russell, so come watch it live on W4CY Radio, miss some past episodes, download on iTunes, the Jimmy Star Show, we're Ron Russell, it's the Jimmy Star Show, we're Ron Russell